Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Rono. And now, Senator Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations to each of you on your nomination. Judge Alicon, I want to come to you. Uh, some remarks you made when you were Solicitor General in D.C. to the American Constitution Society event. And you said, and I'm going to quote you through this, that it was your, in your job you try to carry out and live some of the values of ACS. And here's a portion of the mission statement for ACS, and this is off of their website. It states that ACS mission includes redressing the founding failures of our Constitution and enduring inequities in our laws in pursuit of realized equality. So in your role as both an advocate and now as a judge, do you subscribe to that part of the mission statement and what do you see as the enduring inequities in the laws that need to be redressed? Senator, when I said as Solicitor General that I carry out the values of ACS, it was the values of mentorship and discussion and vibrant discussion and debate. So then you the don't agree with what is on their website. I so here's another part for you. It also notes on their website that its goal is to promote laws and policies that advance realized equality. So what laws and policy are you trying to promote? And then are, is this part of what you're trying to carry out? Uh, is it activism as a judge that you're seeking? So as a federal judge, what would that look like if you're trying to live this out, if you're trying to carry it out, if you're trying to change those laws? Senator, as a judge, it is not the role to change laws. It is to interpret and apply the laws that this body okay. passes. Okay, well, in your comments, that's what you said. I'm quoting you back to you. Uh, so how would you advance realized equality from the bench? Senator, in my current role, I take the law and I apply it to the facts and cases before me. That is what I would do if I were fortunate enough to be confirmed. Okay, so... Um, how would you fulfill your duty to neutrally apply the law of people that are coming before you? So describe to me your method of statutory or constitutional interpretation. How would you carry that out? Absolutely, Senator. When I am confronted with a statutory or constitutional interpretation case, I take my cues from the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has instructed in statutory interpretation cases, you first must look at the text, and if the text is unambiguous... Okay, so what is your understanding of original public meaning? My understanding of original public meaning is that it is a tool of constitutional interpretation that the Supreme Court has used in interpreting the Second Amendment and the Confrontation Clause, and I would faithfully apply the Supreme Court's mechanisms okay. for interpreting. Okay, original public meaning uh, seeks an understanding of the statute as it would have been understood by the general public at the time of passage. Okay, let me move on. Uh, with you for um, something else. I, uh, your previous nominations process, you answered several questions for the record indicating your views on when nationwide injunctions are appropriate. So can you point to any provision of the Constitution or federal law that expressly permits a single district judge to grant relief that is binding on the entire nation. Give me one. The All Writs Act and Rule 65 and judicial precedents do not foreclose a district judge from entering relief that is beyond the geographical boundaries, but it should be, and as an in all injunctive relief, sparingly used because it's a drastic remedy. But it is appropriate that neither the Constitution nor any federal statute explicitly authorizes district judges to issue nationwide injunctions. Isn't that correct? It is an equitable remedy that has not been foreclosed. Isn't that correct? Yes or no? 
it is correct that there is no law one way that or another. That is accurate. That is correct. Thank you. I appreciate uh, the time. Senator Hawley. Thank you.